Hey, it's me, Katie, and today I am here with Warwick, and we are going to be talking about moving to Chicago's North Shore. Typically, we're not doing a lot of videos that are just specifically market-focused, but we decided the market is, I call it horrific right now, and so I feel like we needed to address this to kind of get this out there and let everybody know, let you know what is going on in the real estate market on Chicago's North Shore and probably pretty much around all of the Chicagoland area. If you want to talk with either of us, there is a link below that you can just go ahead and set up a free, just advisory 20 minute call with either of us. And we're gonna just chat with you about the market where you're looking, if you're thinking you wanna to move to the suburbs and you are not sure exactly which suburb is best for you, we can talk through that with you about some of the schools and some of the, the high schools and things like that as well. So feel free, book a call with us right now. Hi, Warren. Good day, good day. Well, thanks. I think this is a very exciting, terrifying topic to talk about because I deal with a lot of buyers and right now, if you're new to looking for a home, there's something to know. There's a, a listing agent and a buying agent. Listing agent is the person that's listing a home for sale. A buyer agent is helping people find a home, opening the door to get people into a home. So that's just the general. Uh, most agents are both, but some specialize on one or the other. Now, I'm a buyer's agent helping people find homes in the Chicago area talking about anywhere north of Chicagoland and a little bit west. So Evanston through to Highland Park and then out west to Arlington Heights and so on. And I've been seeing some terrifying things happening lately about what is happening. And we're going to talk about what those are. So firstly, there are no homes on the market and there haven't been there none. for a long time. And you shared some information with me, I think two weeks ago, Katie, but in Northbrook, we're just talking Northbrook, typically in January, there's about 750, 800 homes on the market. Currently there's 400. And out of those 400, um, most of them are already under contract. Most of them get sold within two, three days. And most of them have multiple offers. So what are you hearing, Katie? Yeah, so, you know, it's painful. I mean, it's really, really painful right now. So I'm generally doing listings. Uh, and so I'm on the kind of the receiving end. I will tell you, like, I would say six or seven years ago, I was carrying like 20 listings. One time I remember 20 listings I had that were active. And I get another listing and I come home and my husband say, great, another listing you can't sell, you know, which is funny because at that point, it was like there were no buyers out there to sell. There was a over, you know, more inventory than we knew what to do with. Now, I mean, we have everything we have is under contract. I think we have two, two listings active and everything else is under contract. So when you when you list something right now, it's going under contract immediately. Now, some of you are going to say, that's great. Everybody loves this. Well, you know, sellers might love this. The problem is, is that sellers are not moving because they have no place to go. So the sellers who are moving, I mean, their situation is not always like, oh, we're upgrading. They're probably not upgrading because they have no place to go. Maybe somebody's died or uh, something like that. So it's, it is a stressful situation. And I mean, I had a condo on the market in Glenview and we literally only had it on the market for five hours, total of five hours. And we told buyers that they had to come between two hours one day and three hours the next day. And that was it. That was all they were allowed to come. And people were like, we can't get in that time. I said, I'm sorry, that's too bad. You know, it's just the way it is. And so we had, what did we have? 50 or 60 over 60 on one of the 60 days. 60 groups through to look at this condo and we had 20 offers um every single one of them was above list and the one that won wrote out the inspection zero inspection uh waived the appraisal contingency you know so i mean it was crazy and they went way over list too and so every <laughs> also the other thing is that Every post I'm seeing, like on all the local Facebook groups, are I don't know, work if you've seen this, they're all asking for inventory. Everybody's like desperate for a house. And I feel for people right now, there is just no inventory. And so if you are looking for a house right now, 
this is really almost like a full-time job and you have to have to have that real estate agent as your partner right now and i'm not saying that to be self-serving i'm saying you need an agent in order to get a house in this market for sure now let's just talk about why this happened so last year and the year before homes were going over asking everyone said this is crazy this is not sustainable during that time interest rates were also super low so it was free money if you will to get a house so that created that demand then interest rates skyrocketed from two three percent to seven eight percent and that slowed down the buyers right because less people can afford a home or they get less home uh for the the money and then everyone news everyone was saying the homes are going to collapse the pricing is going to collapse but really what happened is the people that had the two, three, 4% interest rates stopped selling their home. The people that needed to upgrade their home just stopped looking because they couldn't afford it, but they still need to upgrade their home. So now we have the interest rates going up, the inventory going down, people still need to move, especially the Chicago land. The only people, no one's coming here because there's beautiful mountains or scenery. People are coming here because they have to work here, right? So are there families that, here? Are there families here? Yeah, that's why Chicago might be different to Boulder or wherever, right? That's what it is. So now interest rates started coming back down, but now you have a year, year and a half of people that haven't been able to find a home, inventory at the lowest it's ever been. So that's just the general supply and demand. Now, interest rates are still high. They still, you know, double of what they used to be, but you have a year and a half of people that haven't found a house still looking for a home. Now I'm working with many buyers at the moment and I go to an open house. The open house has 60 people. They don't even let open house. They don't even let you in the house without an agent now at some of these showings. And as soon as we get in there, there's a 15 minute time slot. And they say, we've already received 10 offers. Offers are due in three hours. If you like the house, you've got to tell us. So I've been to a home, literally there was 32 offers. The house was on the market in two days. We offered 20% over asking as is, and we still lost the house. So that's what we're talking about. That's how bad it is for buyers. Now it's the same thing for sellers because yeah, it's a seller's market, but they have to move somewhere. Now, nobody, and we never look, we never recommend somebody sell their house if they don't know where they're going because you're going to run into the same situation. So that's why it's, it's like the chicken or the egg. Do you sell, what do you do? And that's the problem. You and cannot sell. So no one wants to sell because they can't move anywhere. And what we're seeing, as Katie mentioned, it's only people um, that are passing away or moving to retirement homes or different communities or actually leaving the state that list their homes. There's very little people moving in town to upgrade their home for two reasons. The interest rate they have, if they wanted to upgrade the house, their mortgage is going to triple, not double, because now the rates are higher. And also there's just no inventory. So right. we're not seeing any town to in intertown moving, if you will. And this is something that I have been talking about for years and years and years is the empty nesters, especially the ones who need to downsize or need one level living, but they're not old enough to go to a retirement home. Like I have been screaming about this for years that there is zero inventory for people, I would say like, like 65 and up, okay? Their kids are out of the house. The house is way too big. Their home is maybe one of their largest investments. They have spent their whole lives on the North Shore paying taxes, you know, supporting their schools, supporting the local community, and there is zero housing for them. And the problem I have is the villages, and I will call out Northbrook, specifically Northbrook, is only talking about retirement homes is assisted living. Like these people do not want to go to assisted living. And the problem is that these people really, really want to stay in the state. They want to stay on the North shore and they can't find any place to go to. And the villages in these areas all over the North shore are not really looking at this significant, significant issue. And so what's happening is you have all these people who are 65 and up who really should be moving into a different home they are not moving they are staying because they have no place to go but then that does not open up the inventory for the 
for the young people coming from the city. There's yeah. just no opportunity for these young people to get into the towns because the older people have nowhere to go. Look, if you just look in general, every new construction you see is bigger and better, right? Now, that doesn't mean people need that. Obviously, people need it because they're selling. But yes, if you got a three, four, five thousand square foot home and you're only using 10% of it because your kids are all gone, but you love the area, you love the restaurants, you've been here 40, 50 years, there's nowhere to go. And, you know, let's be honest, some people just don't like condos, right? Some people don't like living with neighbors. Some people don't like hearing their neighbors. They just want a nice ranch. And they also want to prepare for, you know, maybe not dealing with stairs all day, but there's no inventory. You will never see a new ranch getting built, not in this area, no. unless the village, at least the towns here approve a, a town like this or a little community, a subdivision. And that's, you know, we have got a video, we have a video about it. So be sure to check that one out. We'll leave it down below, but that's what we're seeing. And it, it doesn't make a difference if you're looking at a 300,000, 400,000, $500,000 house or a, a 1.2 to $2 million house. I just showed some other clients, a, a $1.4 million house, a home down the road had 27 offers. And that was at the same price point, 1.5 million. It, 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 it's, there's no discrimination on price point here. It's, it's just. For two years, there's been no homes. Yeah, and one thing, you know, I know if you're a seller, you're thinking, well, this is great. We can list our house for whatever we want. Let me tell you the risk, okay? You will get a high price for your house right now if it's priced correctly and it looks good. If you price your house too high and it does not sell within the first four days, you are dead in the water, literally dead in the water because every buyer knows that if a house is not sold, there's something wrong with it. And so yeah, that's and why your price has to be perfect work. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah, so the only and what I'm recommending to my buyers right now, or I just advising them, not, you know, I can't tell anyone what they buy or what they don't, but the only houses you'll be able to get a deal on are the ones that have been sitting for 30 to 60 days. Yep. Nobody wants them. You will not get into a multiple office situation. The cute already done house, unless you got cash, or unless you got a nice story, very difficult to compete. And, 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 and that's the bottom line. And you know, most people buy homes with a mortgage. Now, when you've got 10 offers on a house and one of them is not a mortgage contingency, it's just easier for the seller to go with that house because there's less risk for them. Right. So that is the issue. So if you are looking to move to the area and you do have some extra time, find the house that no one wants see if you can fix it up if you have that budget because that's the only realistic scenario on winning a house period right now right and so if you think you know you're going to come in and you're going to bid list price with a mortgage contingency and not super strong offer it's just not going to work in this market like if you have a mortgage i mean you can write out the mortgage contingency and your risk is that you'll lose your earnest money so you know if you keep your earnest money kind of low and you're very very confident you're going to get a mortgage that is an option to compete now you know it depends that's not going to be as strong as a full cash offer but that does take away some of the issues specifically with the appraisal because right now we're in a time where we have no idea if any of these homes are going to appraise. And if a house doesn't appraise, the buyer cannot get approved for the mortgage. That is why a cash offer is so much more significant than a mortgage contingency. And so we're seeing offers and I know I'm like, well, we're, we're not even going to appraise. I know as a listing agent that we can't have a contingent upon the appraisal. So as a buyer, you really have to think about are you willing to write out the appraisal contingency, come to the table with additional cash? Are you willing to maybe take it no inspection? I mean, are you going to do a lot of work on it? Take it no inspection. I, I hate to say that, but these are the things that you have to do in this market right now. And it's not fair because it's a crazy time. And I, I feel terrible for the buyers. I feel terrible watching you guys out there, you know, trying to get a house. I mean, it's, it's horrific really right now. Yeah, so all we want to do here is is shed some light on what is happening in the current day situation. Will it be different in three months, four months? I don't know. But I tell you what, if the interest rates keep going down, um, there will be the same amount of people looking. So I do think there's going to be a lag effect for maybe another year or two. 
you had a year and a half, two years of people not buying homes. That's a big wave to catch up until such time that it evens out. Yep. So yes. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I want to mention is I'm more of a buyer's agent, agent. Katie's more of a listing agent, but together we work on both. If you're working with a solo agent, it's very difficult to, for them to know both sides of the story. Mm -hmm. So I see both sides of the story on listings, how people negotiate, what actually works. And Katie also sees it. So we see from both angles where are buyers leaning towards or sellers or how are offers getting won. And that is very important these days because you want an agent that can help you win an offer in a multiple offer situation. Right. And the one thing I would say about what does this look like in the future? So, you know, I've been wrong numerous times uh, when COVID hit. Before COVID, I was like pretty dead on. Uh, COVID hit and then it was like, I don't know. I mean, I was just wrong. So now what I'm saying is that I can talk about the next three months probably. The next three months is going to be the same of what we have right now. If interest rates go down, we'll probably get a few more people coming into the market and hopefully that will loosen up some of the inventory. So as soon as all of these hot, hot buyers find homes, like Warwick said, the market is going to go steady and then it's going to crash. I really, really believe crash down. Now this may be next year, this may be in a couple of years, but there will be much, much more inventory coming on, especially because, which we didn't talk about it, is the property taxes in Illinois. They continue to go up, continue, continue to rise. And which means as, as property taxes continue to rise, values on homes are going to go down because your home is just not as affordable. If your taxes, if you're spending $2,000 a month on taxes, you just can't afford the same type of house. So, you know, if you're thinking about selling in the next couple of years, you know, you've got to really stay on top of the market. I recommend reaching out. Uh, if you want guys want to reach out to us, we can certainly set you up on a market search so you can just be aware of what's going on in your neighborhood. Um, you know, and if you're looking for a home, let us know. We can, we can talk to you certainly about helping you find something right now and the best way to do it. I think, I think what Warwick said is really true is that we are one of the largest teams on the North Shore. Uh, North Shore residents, for a long, long time, know it in and out. Kids go to school there, we went to school there. You know, so I think in, in having agents who understand the market at that type of, of level is really, really important. And if you're working with a city agent and you're trying to find a house on the North Shore, I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be incredibly hard work. I Just talk yeah. about that one. Yeah. So look, having a local agent is definitely uh, a plus, right? Especially living here forever. And then knowing the nuances of each little neighborhood and what's good there and, and how fast homes are moving and also seeing how much traffic that agent has had. Now, if you go look at how many transactions we've done, we've done a bunch. So you can actually see that we are in the market every day learning this. Now, I don't want to knock anyone out there, but if you're doing one or two or three home sales a year, you don't get to see what's actually happening. So it is very difficult to get the correct information. You know, even me, if I go to a, a town I don't know, I'm calling an agent that I do know in that town, getting the information from them so I can better educate myself and help help my clients win an offer at the end of the day. But unfortunately, this is how it is. I kind of disagree with Katie on the crash portion of it. And I'll tell you why. One house, 30 offers. And it's not just this one house with 30 offers. I've seen it more than 10 times now. We had 20 offers on, on a condo, <laughs> right? That is a huge amount of people still looking for a house. The amount of homes that have to come to the market to pacify that amount of offers is a lot. Okay, now, I agree with will you. prices agree. settle down for sure? But I don't know if it's now or two or three or four years because that's still a lot of people actively looking to buy. And that, the amount of inventory that has to catch up is a lot. So okay. I'll agree I, with would, you I wouldn't say don't buy a house. Look, as I mentioned earlier, moving to Chicago, people are moving here because they have to. They're not moving here because it's a vacation town or pretty or whatever. We have to live in this market because of jobs. It's a huge business area, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if you're looking for a home, the best bet right now is find something nobody else wants. See if you can fix it up and make it work for the next two, three, four, five years. And the other thing I want to remind you about is that while interest rates are high, if you are able to get a house right now and interest rates are high, you will be able to refinance when rates go down. Now, assuming that you're not necessarily underwater on the house or the value is still there in the house because it does have to go through a new appraisal when you do refinance. But that is just something to keep in mind if you're thinking, I can't spend this much money. Well, you can spend maybe a little bit more and then refinance where your payments will come down, you know, in a year. If you can kind of, I don't know, weather the storm for that, really. So, I mean, we've already had a long discussion today. So thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, reach out. But next video, we'll talk about property taxes because it is a big issue. It is coming up more and more. But again, if you're moving to Chicago, you're moving here because you have to. But yeah. keep that in mind, if you get a job offer to move to Chicago, you're going to want to check what the property taxes are because we have one of the highest property taxes in the nation. Yes, definitely. definitely. So, keep so that in mind. Yeah, so definitely. So we want to make sure you subscribe and hit like down there for us as well. We're growing this channel. Uh, we've got another channel as well that we're working on that's more about selling your home. We've got a link down below as well. If you're interested in selling your home, it's going to talk all about how to get your home ready to sell. But we've got a lot of information that we're going to be coming out with. We don't want you to miss it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot. And we'll talk to you then.